Here we go. So. I got it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to, Up to, welcome you. to the last Piper Ledger Supply Chain and Trade Finance meeting of 2022, the 1st of December here. Uh, here looks like we have a good crowd. Uh, first off, let's start with our normal. All are welcome. Andrea just had mentioned it, and we'll uh, reiterate uh, comments. We're looking for comments for everybody and everyone from my perspective and our, our group's perspective is equal in uh, their comments and we're looking forward to a, a chat here uh, and we'll get into that in a second. Also uh, realize that uh, this is part of the Linux Foundation here and everything that you say is open community and don't put anything uh, that is confidential. Don't say anything confidential. We don't wanna have any collusion, all that kind of good stuff here. So with that, we have a little agenda here and we thought we'd talk a little bit about uh, 2022 review. We'll talk a little bit about 2023 planning. Uh, it's amazing, 2022 is already almost gone here. Uh, and then we're really looking for your input on these in terms of speakers. And then you'll see some of these ways to get involved that we wanna spend a little bit of time on here uh, as, as we go along. And announcements, I'm gonna do these up front here, Alicia, if that's okay. Uh, our next meeting will be on the 12th of January. So we'll have a kickoff. And then also GS1 has a call to paper, call for papers there where you can uh, get, your, get your ideas and thoughts in by December 13th here. So let's see here. With that, Andrea, do you wanna talk a little bit about 2022, Eric, or I'm happy to also? No, I'll go first, I think. Uh... Tom, uh, I was a very peculiar year for me, it needless to say, because I uh, started out with the uh, straight fund state in January. And uh, I see it was some kind of narrative from 2021, which was a very good year for me. Under my perspective, the SIG, the former trade fund SIG grew massively, both in terms of participation, but that became some kind of a one man show for me, which was fun to have it. So, luckily, I managed to find some other companions. We would start talking, and we say it's like it's the first, first uh, Alfonso and myself. We were on two days during 2021. It was called Breaking the Silence Bridge in Silence. So it was like you say, putting down the very first stone. And uh, we, it was about finding a common ground of interest for all the stakeholders involved in, in this newly created seat, which came from the merging of the two common ones. And we spotted this common ground into sustainability and ESG related topics. We managed to bring in so many speakers. Uh, we actually kicked off the year off with Alexander Malakap, a good friend of Alexander from Toronto, Canada, which went great. So we continued and same, same pathway. And if you remember, Tom, we had this great talk when we guested Thomas Kubiak and Ravi Hansford from ICC UK talking about sustainable program they have in the ICC. And, and again and again during the year, March, April, May, we, we continue delivering uh, and we continue casting light on solution based on blockchain and DLP for sustainability in cross with trade, the supply chain. And that was good. Besides this, Summer came, and you see, we had that great speech by David Maynell, from David Maynell, except you know, I was personally honored to have him on the speech on 26th of July when he delivered the speech about the newly created framework called URDPT, which is, by the way, also an add stone on that uh, new framework, general framework, regarding sustainability and cross with trade and supply chain. So, I count to do more of this, depending on the availabilities of people involved with the IBCC, with other international institutions. And I think it would be great to see how blockchain and DLTs do fit into that space, how they can cross back. So that was just the very first thought. And uh, let's see, uh, I'm, on a personal level, I'm really satisfied with how we kick this new meeting off in 2022. And I'm just so curious to see what comes next. I've always thought that what was missing within SIG are projects. 
I'm not a tech guy, so I'm not a coder, I'm not an IT architect, sadly. I'm just a former trade finance professional uh, who didn't even work in banks. I always worked in corporates, which brings, you see, a very peculiar point of view on the matter. So this uh, uh, next goal, I think, and I hope you agree with me, Tom, Marie, Alicia, next step should be, uh, let's say, uh, enabling the SIG to deliver projects. Uh, on multiple levels, whether it's white papers, and we've got discussing this, whether it's about code, whether it's about something else in free that can contribute to the advancement of the industry. I mean, digital trade funds, digital supply chain, slash funds. Uh, so that's it on my side. I mean, if I have to summarize 2022 was uh, a year change, which always makes good. And I hope 2023 to be a sort of good follow up this year was a very important one. So I, I'll leave it back to you, Tom, to give your perspective as much as I would love to have Alicia's one and Rick's one. Good. I, I, I will thank you, Andrea, and I will uh, sh share my uh, perspective. I also am glad that we joined forces here, supply chain, trade finance. Uh, for those on the phone, uh, us co-chairs, we've been getting on the phone every week Tuesday for a half an hour to kind of plan, try to plan things out and see where we go. So uh, the good news is we're, we're, we're still getting together. We're still committed to uh, supply chain and the use of blockchain and specifically Hyperledger in all its uh, forms uh, to drive some success here. Um, We've, we've certainly had some challenges in uh, this year with we.trade, uh, with, with uh, Trade Lens announcement uh, yesterday. Uh, there's opportunity for us to go forward and we'll figure out the new ways. To, we, we learned something and now we'll figure out new ways to address this, as Andrea mentioned. Uh, two things I want to mention, the, the uh, webinars, yes, have been very good and we'll continue those in, in the, in the uh, following year. And I uh, want, want to say uh, thank you to the Hyperledger folks for uh, David and Tomas and Igor for getting those out onto YouTube so that they get a bigger audience uh, with things. And Andrea has been great on LinkedIn, getting the news out. And then he's even putting together a weekly news update. If you haven't seen it, subscribe on the wiki. And he has a list of uh, links where you can get more news and views on what's happened in supply chain and trade finance and uh, blockchain. And then lastly, uh, as Andrea said, one of the things that we've really uh, focused on, actually not lastly, sorry, before lastly, I want to also thank Alicia Noel for uh, joining. She's on this call here. Um, she's been joining uh, Andrea, myself, and Eric as kind of a co-chair. So we should probably make you formal, Alicia, um, in some way. But um, it, it's been great to have your voice on a regular basis helping, helping us lead the charge here. Uh, so I want to acknowledge that. And then lastly, again, as Andrea said, this idea of a project getting beyond webinars, what more can this group do uh, across corporate members, across uh, coders out there, as well as folks who have business savvy in this area and be able to combine that into something that can provide value across Hyperledger, using be able to use Hyperledger most effectively, but also more importantly, uh, blockchain within supply chain and uh, trade finance. So I'm going to stop with that. Eric and Alicia, if there's any fast comments you want to have, well, you're welcome to put in, or if there's anybody else out there, we'll, we'll uh, grab those and then we'll talk a little bit about 2023. I think it's been great having the two things combined. This is Alicia, for those of you who don't know me, um, because there is so much overlap and trade finance and supply chain management are so entwined. So bringing these perspectives together has been um, really helpful and I think increases the potential for our long-term impact. Um, I think there's some great things we're looking forward to in next year. I, I love how everyone's really excited about white papers and projects. And one thing we've spoken a little bit about before, and that's coming to my mind as I'm looking at the SIG wiki page, is the scope. Because one thing we're trying to do is get more involvement from corporate members and Tom and Andrea and Eric and I have been are, are reaching out and we want to get their 
opinions and their perspectives so that we can make sure that the work that we are doing here is relevant and helpful to them. And as we interact more with them, we're looking to really um, rewrite the scope on the wiki to make it relevant and current. So that's something I'm looking forward to in, in the next year. Good, thanks Alicia. Anybody else out there who wants to talk a little bit about 2022? Okay, going once, going twice, going three times sold. <laughs> I'm not an auctioneer here, so we'll move on. Okay, so let, let's move on then to uh, 2023 planning and some of the discussion that we've had as co-chairs and see where the audience that's here right now, uh, what their thought is. Uh, so first off, uh, Alfonso, thank you for presenting a, a uh, um, few weeks ago, maybe it was two weeks ago, actually. And uh, and what's happening with supply chain projects in Latin America, and where you've talked about as a follow up from that, that we'll have a workshop where we'll dive into more detail. Again, following along the lines of what value add can we provide for uh, members, non-members, uh, interested parties in. Uh, Latin America and specifically around supply chain. So, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Tom. This Daniela would love to speak. I see she she raised her hand. So, I, I was going to let Tom finish, and and then I was just going to jump in before we go into 2023. Um, for those of you on the phone who don't know me, I'm Daniela Barbosa. I'm the executive director of the Hyperledger Foundation. Um, it has been a pleasure to actually watch the work that Tom and Andreas and Alicia and others have done, Eric here on the phone as well, um, over the last year to bring these two groups together. So I want to just thank everybody. I know that this is hard work. Um, thank you for the kind words on you know, staff, um, including David Boswell and Tomas Eja in supporting um, the SIG and the moves. Um, but I know I know it's been hard work, uh, and I do think it positions this special interest group in uh, a better way for, for 2023 uh, and beyond. And it warms my heart, Alicia, when I hear, um, and I, I touch base with Tomas on this as well, when I hear, you know, SIGs say, you know, we need to take a look at the charter and make sure that we're addressing the needs of the community, the greater community as well. Um, and we're here, you know, I just want to say that we're here to support, you know, where with the outputs and the work products that the special interest team uh, a group here wants to have. So I just wanted to thank everyone. Um, I've been listening to the supply chain SIG meetings, um, you know, randomly on my walks down to the beach on Saturday and Sundays. So I know I want to say it's been really great to listen and to see it mature. So uh, so thank you all. I, and specifically, um, you know, Tom, uh, Tom, because I worked very closely when it was the supply chain special interest group, I was kind of his main point of contact. Um, so uh, yes, thank Good you. Good deal. Thanks, Daniela. And uh, Little little preview here. We got Daniela here. She's also agreed to join us on January 12th for the uh, beginning and share a little bit about what they're thinking about at uh, overall Hyperledger um, perspective for 2023. So thanks, Daniela. And we'll look forward to hearing more, you know, that all these ideas are going to percolate over the holidays there. Mm -hmm. and what you want to rock and roll with and guidance and all that kind of good stuff. So thanks. Okay. So let's go back here to 2023. Uh, so we got this Latin America workshop. The other thing that we as co-chairs talked about was the idea of focusing on a specific um, area of supply chain and trade finance each quarter to give ourselves a little bit more concentration. We also talked about it in a different flavor. Maybe we could do it in the uh, flavor of we do geographic. Well, ultimately what we decided is let's, let's uh, focus on a specific area. And so, to kick off, we're thinking trade finance for first quarter. We're certainly interested in speakers. Certainly we have our networks, but we're looking for a broadening. Uh, we all have lots of contacts out there. We probably looked at our LinkedIn uh, overlap. There's maybe 50% overlap or something like that. So if trade finance, we're pretty set with that. I mean, I guess we could change it, but right now we're pretty set with it. So really we're looking for folks that are on the phone here or on the line as well as people listen, recording, getting to us, putting putting something out there on the wiki with suggested speakers uh, for 2023 after the 12th of January. We're planning on keeping the same schedule every other week um, on Thursdays at noon Eastern, and we'll adjust those if a speaker is from 
Asia, Pacific, uh, Japan, um, where we'll, we'll we'll do something at night or morning if we need to do that. But right now, that's what our plan is for the, uh, going forward in 2023 first quarter. So any thoughts? Anybody want to uh, either say, yeah, that sounds good, or and I have some speakers, or uh, have some thoughts on what could be Q2 and beyond, because we, we don't have to stay at a high level. We can get into some very specific thoughts around uh, a focus for a quarter. And we've even gone down that. I think we had one on tokenization. Alicia, I'm trying to remember what other ones we had besides tokenization. You're going to bring up the minute. Give me a minute. So potential quarterly topics, uh, minimizing the trade finance gap, tokenization, digital credentials, going beyond track and trace, interoperability, which we know is a, a really important topic. But we'd love to add to that list. We want to know what's important to everybody so that we're we're planning things that are, that are relevant. Good. Good. And of course, all of those, even if they're cross industry, we're looking to have a focus on how does this actually work in supply chain and trade finance, not, not just kind of generic in general. Hey, Tom, we have a couple of hands that are up uh, right now. Hey, I just walked into the office. Hi. <laughs> Hey, Eric. Hi, Eric. <laughs> you look like you're outside in snow or something. <laughs> I was. It is snowing. So, Daniela, your walk down to the beach thing, not appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's rainy today. Um, um, I think I am. Yeah. had his hand up first yeah. before yeah. me. So I, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you so much. Uh, I have been following the Hyperledger SIG, starting with the trade finance and the, including the... Uh, supply chain. I'm so much, much more glad to be a kind of the partner and the follower of your SIG. And the, first of all, accept my uh, kind uh, good words to your SIG. And the, just I want to add one or little things that for the next year, all what we what the, our SIG is doing, always touching to the providers. All the providers has somehow developed a kind of the services aiming to reach to the end users. What, what, what I'm trying to tell you that let's next year, for the next year, try to try to reach to the end user directly. For the ones who are using the tools who has been running on the Hyperledger fabrics, let's say. And that's why their experiences, which they will share with us, is so much important to me. Because all we have been gathering the information from the providers, and the, but the, I don't have the, any kind of the measurement tool in my hand to make the kind of the understanding uh, what the end user is thinking about the, their solution. Is it bad? Is it too bad? Or is it nice to have? Or it is really good to be good, good to have a, a perfect solution. That's why uh, it's a kind of the journey, and the a, a journey will help us to understand the uh, hyperledger families will bring us to the next levels. And that's why uh, all I can tell you that uh, thank you so much. And before going further, I I I I guess Alfonso from the Latin America side is here. Uh, I couldn't join the, the webinar, last webinar, and the, it's really perfect. I am so much proud to understand the, what they have done in Latin America. That is the, my aim, that's my target, to make it in a similar way in Turkey. That's why, uh, Alfonso, I would like to thank you once again, once, once more, and the, your, your support to uh, Latin America within the uh, Hyperledger family is really great. And the, I, I will ask your assistance for the coming uh, days. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're, and you're I, very, I, I, I wish you the, all the best for the next year. You're very kind, Ehan. Um, most happy to help. I'm here. Thank you. Thank Anything you, you need, happy to help. Thank you. Thank you, Alfonso. Yeah. All are welcome and all will help. All that's good. Um, I and let me just paraphrase what I thought you had, and then we'll go to Daniela here. Um, sure. What what I thought I heard you said is that hey, it was great having the providers, the software companies, the folks who have made the the application, and hear what they're doing. I'd like to hear more 
from the what benefits I got they got what what an end user said oh hallelujah this is great or you know hey this is okay but you know it didn't quite do it for me right yeah, yeah. It, it, it's quite I'm sure but I want to listen to their stories indeed yeah yeah good good and I uh I think I think there's a little bit of hope that corporate members might be able to provide some of those kind of things and as yeah. you can imagine it's it's like in a reference right it's it can be challenging but I I love your thought there. Because uh, so that's much. where the rubber meets the road. There. Thank you, Tom. Okay, good. I'm glad we understand it. Daniela, all yours. Um, <laughs> I was wondering where, uh, Alicia, I think, where should we put recommendations or suggestions? On the wiki? On this page? On this um, meeting page? You can certainly put them on the meeting page, but if, if there are ideas you have, we'd love to hear them now so that we can discuss, ask questions, etc. And always feel free to send notes over the email, over the listserv. Okay. Yeah. Put, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so one thing, and I, I signed up for, and I missed the, um, the webinar was the recent FDA tech um, new standards to improve food system transparency. Um, and this, I think, comes a, so out of some of the work that Frank Yanis was doing when he was over at, uh, at Walmart. Um, and it looks like, you know, the FDA and also the Commerce Department in the U.S. specifically um, should be people that we get closer with um, and maybe have them come and do presentations here. Or maybe we can provide some sort of guidance uh, for them. Uh, but I do think um, government sector should be something that we and, you know, I certainly can try to help connect these dots. Um, so with the FDA and then the Commerce, um, the Commerce Secretary in the U.S. and I suspect in Europe there's you know similar agencies and stuff that we can reach out to as well. But I would like to see uh, maybe a maybe a theme around um, government um, uh, rela you know relationships so they can come and do their presentations and, and I don't know if that's something that um, is already on your agenda. So just my okay, that would be. That would be great. And certainly I've already had some interaction with Frank and I'm happy to follow up with him, but I'd love to, to have that as something because there is a lot going on in government and I don't know nearly as much about it as I'd like. Yeah. yeah maybe we can map out which yeah. agencies around the world are working on which things, um, yes. you know, what we found just at the Hyperledger Foundation and some other project initiatives, like for example, with central bank digital currencies is that we mm -hmm. made a lot of connections with central banks and different authorities like BIS and MAS around the world to come mm -hmm. together to talk about the topic of open source and why open mm -hmm. source in that space. And I think we might have the same opportunity um, specifically to uh, food, um, you know, food supply chain. Yeah, that, that would be that great, great. Daniela, by the way, because to see how it works, to see how things come together with the CBDCs around the world in terms of cross-border payments, that would be under the perspective of trade finance, that would be a major thing to understand how this new technology fits into the traditional one, and how it helps to improve it. So that would be great. And by the way, it would be a good, good, good thing to do under the optics, you see, under the view of uh, regular service, regular service, because it would help you see financial markets cross pathway with trade funds, supply chain. That would be the highly beneficial in my view. Okay, good. I see a comment there. It looks like from Alfonso uh, that agrees with Daniela, and it would be good to map it out. So good, su good suggestion on the government there. Anybody else uh, here that wants to share kind of a thought either on a certain part of the market that we should go after, um, a certain topic that would be of interest, folks that we should talk to, be talking with or try to talk with? I mean, this is, this is all about making the news here as opposed to uh, sharing the news. I mean, we can we can share the news for sure. Here's what's happening, but it'd be nice if we can actually make something happen here through the supply chain and trade finance group. I have another suggestion, um, and I don't know, Tom. You and I talked about this. I don't know if it's been talked about in as this groups combined around grid, um, hyperledger grid, the grid project. Um, and have there been any interactions in the last, you know, six to eight months with that project? There have not been. So th that that could be another area that, you know, if there's code that's there and it's available and it has some value. We could we could try to publicize it as well as where do we take it next? Mm -hmm. 
So yes, I I, w- I would welcome uh, maybe facilitating some uh, a joint conversation that we can maybe brainstorm on how we could do better together in 2023. Okay. And for those of you who are not familiar with Hyperledger Grid, um, it is an active project. Um, it the some of the backing uh, firms that are working with with that Grid project um, include uh, Cargill and Target. Um, where they they were even doing some code contributions as well. Um, but yeah, it'd be great in 2023 to get them um, in, involved or at least brief us on what's going on, uh, brief this group on what's going on. So um, go. um, I'll take that as an action item. Good. Good. That's great. I'm okay. not taking any more action items, Tom. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm good. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Now, Danielle, I'm curious, are they mostly working on the supply chain management end of it? Are they doing anything trade finance related? How are supply they supply chain? Using supply chain management. Great. Chain. Thank you. Good. Um, so so I'm gonna throw out a couple things for Q2 and beyond. Well, I'll throw out one thing and then uh we'll see if there's much interest. I, I personally am very interested in governance, and I think one of the reasons why there's been a challenge with uh some of the early blockchain implementations is the, uh, I don't want to say a lack, because I don't don't think people are trying to keep people out, but just probably more structure around or charter around creating governance, not just in creation time, but also in operation time. And so there's actually going to be a presentation uh, by uh, Savita Fakuri, Um, She heads up a group that I'm part of, an IEEE, where we're creating a standard for blockchain governance. And so she'll be presenting, I think, on the Hyperledger Finance Group uh, somewhere in December here. Sure what's going to, no, actually, it's the Climate Action and Accounting Group she's going to be presenting. He's going to put something out on our wiki here. That could be an area where we could spend some time around governance. And, you know, we, we got some cases where things didn't work out. And so we can use some of that knowledge potentially, maybe even some of yours, Sophia, um, specifically, as well as others to help us figure out how does this work better in the future here? Uh, so I'll throw that out. Point, Tom, uh, I, I know that ISO also published a few governance documents lately. I, uh, I sit on the uh, TC307 side of things, oh, okay. ISO. So uh, governance documents are coming out and uh, that'd be a good topic to, to talk about. Okay, good, good. I mean, certainly it's near and dear in my heart. We're, we, we've agreed the IEEE and TC307 that we, we should continue to go forward um, and not try to combine forces here because we'll, we'll prob- maybe that's done in the future, but we figured let's, let's do two different groups here and we're in contact at least with it. So that's good. Um, anybody else on governance, yay or nay? Okay. Always up for governance. Yeah. Always up for governance. You're Always up. The former investor relations, former academic governance is really important. Governance is how you say you're going to do things, and it, it's really important. And it often gets short shrift. Yes, yes. Um, so, so any, anybody else? I can't see everybody is, is going through. But let's yes, hear some uh, words, Peter. Yes. You know, yeah, kind of interesting, but not really. Um, I. I... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Alfonso. I was saying the word, but I was. I think we 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 don't say the same thing. So. No, I, Sorry. Go I, ahead. I agree. I agree with with govern with the governance issue, Tom. And I was. I just wrote in in the chat. Um, we're working also with T O I P Trust over I P Foundation within the Linux Foundation, and they came up with a beautiful model, which is you know a stack of technical layers and governance layers. And when you put the two together, it's extremely powerful. So trust over IP foundation, it's a sister foundation, you know, with with mother uh, Linux foundation. I, I use the feminine because in Spanish, son las fundaciones. <laughs> Good deal. Okay, so there's an option there. Um, and then I'll... I'll Anybody else before I go forward, before I say anything else? One, who else do we have here? Sophia? Uh, 
Yeah, Tom, I'll, I'll I'll just jump in quickly, and and I agree. Um, on the government side, any I've, we've obviously had a lot of learning um, with trade lens, and and I'd be really happy to share some of my personal learnings and some of the things I've seen um, at any point in time. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I also agree uh, with that, Tom. And I think it's important. Uh, well, also because. Well, all what happened with FTX actually was a real governance issue in there. I think that, well, beyond everything else. And also, I would like to add, um, you know, in governance in blockchain, uh, how does it could work could be a very good thematic. And also, Sophia, maybe you can share something if you want. Uh, I think that uh, one thing that we have been seeing this year Talking about we trade now trade lanes, I, I find uh, both news terrible. And but one of the things is that, well, what's the case for blockchain consortia? I think that's, uh, well, uh, what I think is that consortia, it's not working well uh, uh, around blockchain. And, and but it's not because of the concept of the consortium that it's. It's around the blockchain, but also it's how the governance work between them. So in the case of we trade, you had 16 banks and at the end they couldn't raise money. That was really crazy. So in, in the news of trade lands, you can see, uh, well, it's in the commercial viability. It, I think that, that it, it has nothing to do with that. You know, Merck's the biggest shipping company in the world doing something that they want. They have all the insights of the industry. They're the bigger player. So um, I don't think that's the case. I think we're missing something and we, we can we can dig more into that. I'm sorry, I wasn't, my camera was off. I didn't realize, so. No worry. One uh, thing uh, I agree, Juan. Juan. We discussed this, you see, on a private side during our chat when we, when we met. Together, so we should use deeper into this. And I'm also agree with you, by the way, it's problem governance. So, by the way, to add more substance to this, we have, if I'm not wrong, also SIG governance and should involve, I know a guy, Aravind Boruganti, we should be maybe uh, try to involve him with, that, with our SIG as well. Yeah, and I also want to support the, the, the motion of. Uh, I am. Uh, I'm, I'm pronouncing the well. Yeah, yeah. No, no problem. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, I, I uh, well, have Yes, because I think it's very important the user perspective, and also, uh, well, I'm. I, I am a startup, and I like to think right now as a startup. I think we should also go to, like, this group has to go to a broader audience, and see more use cases of user experience. And what <clears throat> what is going on on that side? Uh, many people see in the industry the blockchain and uh, that blockchain technology it's a solution in search of a problem instead of how can we solve uh, real problems in certain industry. In this case, in the supply chain, problems are like infinite if you go into one by one. So I also want to support that that. And I think that uh, <clears throat> bringing real use cases uh, where the group can, uh, well, uh, actually help into into go very deep into the problem. That's a real good approach, in my opinion. So good. thank you. That's my thought. Good. Thanks, thanks, Juan. Uh, so we're at fifteen minutes before the end of the call here. So what I'm going to suggest is. Uh, any other ideas that pop in your mind as you're talking with other people, please point them towards the wiki and either they can edit it and put in their thoughts or just throw out something into the uh, listserv uh, or the, the email list so that others can see it. We can turn it around, et cetera, here over the next month or so. Um, with that as an intro, uh, Alicia, do you mind talking a little bit about the SIG wiki and what we're thinking about here, since uh, sure. you've been doing some really good work with it. 
Thank you. So I'm not sure how many people actually go to the SIG wiki. It's on the Hyperledger wiki site, and it's a great resource for information about any SIG, any group, anything going on within the Hyperledger Foundation. Our site right now, we have the, the main homepage with basic introduction, some information about meetings. We have, if you look at the page tree on the left, information about all our general meetings. We have the weekend charts, which is Andrea's wonderful weekly news roundup. We just added a new page specifically for SIG members so that um, people can learn a little bit more about the other members. And I want to here ask all of you to go to that page and put a little bit of, about something a little bit of something about yourself so we know who else is participating in the SIG. And this will be especially useful as we start looking at projects to think about who has which knowledge and skills so that we're not committing to projects that we don't have the ability to do. And so that we're doing things to where we within the SIG actually have that, that information. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering, based on our current conversation, I'm thinking it might be useful for, to add in a page that's specifically for sig suggestions so that people who either aren't coming to the meetings but want to be more involved or those of you who just aren't comfortable speaking up during the meeting so that people can go and share that there and we'll, and we'll see it. Does sure. that make talking sense? About sense? Yeah, talking about yeah, suggestions, by the way, let... let let, let me add one thing, Alicia. You mentioned, mm -hmm. and I thank you so much, the weekly charts. That was just my, the fruit of my sick mind, let's say so. Uh, unavailable, of course, and open to suggestion from the around because I would love to change it. It's just an experiment, and I want this to work because it can give the rise to see it. to some interesting use cases, and we all know how important they are. So if something pops up in your mind, feel free to suggest you can use the page that Alicia mentioned, always available as free chat, free talking. So more than open to suggestion in that respect as well. Good, thanks Andrea. Um, and Alicia, do you wanna talk a little bit more also about ways to get involved here since uh, yes, we have co-chairs, but there's, there's <laughs> other opportunities and we're looking to broaden our everyone's engagement here uh, and also hopefully give ourselves more time to work on additional value add. Right. I know when I'm first starting out in group and I want to get involved, sometimes it can be a little bit challenging. How can I contribute? There are a lot of ways to get involved. And the more people we get involved, that helps make the group more robust and then people can grow. And this is this is actually about SIG governance as well, making sure we have, you know, succession planning, who are going to be future chairs, who knows what's going on in the group, so that we have people who are really knowledgeable about what's going on in the SIG. Some things, if, if there's an event you want to see, you know, Alfonso was the one who suggested the Latin America workshop. We're very excited about that. There are speakers you want to see. If you want to reach out, get involved, that's really helpful. Meeting notes. Every time we have a meeting, it's useful to have the notes, taking attendance. Uh, I spent the first several minutes of this meeting taking attendance. Fairly easy. All you're doing is going down through the Zoom and writing in the names um, into the wiki page for this event. Um, so that's something simple if someone wants to help with that. Event flyers. Every time we have an event, flyer gets made so that we can send it out over the listserv so that Andrea can post it to LinkedIn. That if you're comfortable using PowerPoint, it only takes a couple of minutes because there is a Hyperledger template, which is great. Um, another thing, as Andrea said, helping him with his news roundups making updates to the wiki. Uh, I am also a, a Wikipedia editor. So if you are already familiar with updating wikis, it's fairly simple. I'm sure that there are other things, other ways for people to get involved that just are not coming up in my mind. So if there's something you think would add value, please let us know. Uh, 
because like I said, we want to get more people actively involved. And, uh, is, is there anything that anyone here right now is thinking that they'd like to help with? Crickets, okay. Well, please let us know, drop us an email or speak up during the next meeting. Yep. Yeah, well, actually, I, I, I talked uh, with Andre before and, and also with Eric. And so I'm, I'm, I'm open to help and to interconnect with, well, with the ecosystem I am. And, Thank you, Juan. And so I'll, I'll be happy to do that. I think that it's a very important uh, mission for the community and for all the ones that are here to to help into you know to spread the adoption of it mm -hmm. i think that that's a very important mission that's why if you see a, a big guy like trey lens falling down you cannot feel happy because of that so that's my thought total, total, big, terrible. Total, total big disappointment from my side Yes, totally. Uh, awesome. So, um, so from from my side, I'll be happy to to help and to share whatever I can. And Thank so, you. I'm 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 a nerd <laughs> in these areas. So, it's a, a bit more. Come on, yeah, I, don't, I will don't talk to Andre about that. Huh? No, it's twenty one, my friend. So we it's pretty straight talking. Say between Portugal and Italy, there's quite a direct connection. So anytime you like, you just need to drop me. A message, and I'll be there. So more than more than glad to do so fun, you know. Totally, totally. Yeah. Thank you, Andreas. Good. You're welcome. And we, we, we might uh we might reach out to uh here because the, the more the merrier and uh it, it's again the, the more we spread the peanut butter or spread whatever your favorite uh, thing is on bread, uh, <laughs> the more we can focus on getting the word out there as well as working on some of the projects, which I want to spend the last seven minutes of our time on here, projects. So I mentioned this earlier, and Eric, maybe I'll come your way for some thoughts because you and I have had this conversation for over a year that, you know, how do we how do we add more beyond doing the webinars and some of the things we've talked about here, um, specifically within supply chain and trade finance, and then spe more specifically with uh, with some of the hyperledger projects here. And so you see here, we have some ideas, you know, there could be something around very specific use cases out there uh, that we want to develop. It could be something around, you know, okay, we'll, we'll have, uh, let's just create a white paper around some topic so that the world is more educated. So it's a little bit different form than a webinar, but maybe something that has a little bit uh, broader applicability potentially. Um, I was talking with somebody uh, front who is part of the group and they have a food traceability solution. And so they said they'd be willing to work on some white paper if that's what uh, the group decides upon. And we talked earlier about coding. Uh, we talked, we've talked, you know, okay, what, like grid, is there something where we, there's coders who'll be willing to spend some of their time on a project that they know would have value for both themselves as well as maybe their organization uh, out there. And then lastly, uh, there's some standards. Certainly in, within this space, GS1 is, is a huge part of what happens in this space, but there's other standards that probably need, need to happen out there. I mean, the bit of folks, they tried, right? Um, blockchain and logistics, and that didn't quite work out. Uh, so, there's, there's maybe there's something else we can do around that uh, out there in standards or some other place, something in trade finance uh, that needs to work beyond the electronic bill of lading out there. Eric, you want to add any thoughts to that? I know Alfonso has his uh, hand uh, raised for the moment. Let's uh, go to Alfonso. Uh, sure. Let's Alfonso. Sure, we could, we could continue the challenge with it this year. Okay, well, the idea we've talked about, the idea of markets for innovation. Markets for innovation is an idea that MIT has in the MIT Solve program. And it's a challenge, as was our hyperledger challenge. But it's a challenge that connects participants 
with the market. Could be the members of the corporation, could be some local startups, could be a forum where we have a challenge and that's what the workshop, uh, what you call this, the Latin American workshop. The workshop is the first phase of a market for innovation. It might last four or six months, we have to decide it. But the challenge, it's located. It's within a domain problem, trade and finance, commerce, supply chains, within a regional context, Latin America. And it's a place where challenges can be made into reality. Good. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that uh, thoughts. Anybody else have a, a thought? You know, one thing I, I think. A, yeah, there is a good comment, by the way, in the chat by Sophia. So maybe she wants to say a word here, and because she's stating something really interesting. Then, you know, my perspective: the small and medium man, small and medium enterprise. Sophia, would you like to? articulate into that i think it's really insightful what you wrote down in chat yeah sure so um i mean going back to the point about governance yeah 100 percent agree on on governments but there is just a part of me that thinks uh, i worry that we we would prioritize governance too much and the focus should be more on finding a solution that will work a solution that works for for, for customers and also the, the supply chain participants that you're trying to reach and the reality is that when you're when you're talking about supply chains where are they mostly based um uh, where which countries are the largest exporters and um what's the political system like in those countries what are the barriers towards trade digitization and they exist and and they're they're not necessarily possible to overcome um at the moment so <laughs> We saw particularly with Bangladesh uh, and Pakistan as well as the same, where for our bills of lading, they rely on letters of credit. So introducing trade finance, um, banks need to be involved in that chain, um, which adds a layer of complexity. But at the moment, I mean, it enforces the, the need for paper documentation when we try to digitize that and um, yeah, yeah, make it work digitally we need every member of or every participant of that supply chain to be on that same digital network and that includes the banks um but when we think about banks generally we we probably tend to think about the larger banks um hsbc and citibank for example were part of trade lens um the trade lens bank banking network but that's on an international scale and it doesn't go down to in in one particular country would HSBC and, and Citibank be able to um, operate on the network? But also the fact that for Bangladesh, for example, the, the, the banks that are used by the suppliers in particular are the, are the small local banks that nobody's heard of. Um, and there are hundreds, thousands potentially. So governance, I don't, I don't know what relevance it has there. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's obviously necessary, um, but the reality is that it won't solve the problems. So the yeah. paraphrase your thoughts yeah. would be use case first that provides value and governance needs to be layered in there in order to make sure that value is realized is is kind of a, my, what I'm hearing you say. I know we're coming up on, yeah. I just want to raise the idea. Do we want to make governance the focus for Q1? of 2023, because we've had a lot of discussion about governance today, and it seems like people are really passionate. Do we want to make governance our Q1 topic? Uh, I don't know, I'm quite reluctant, and I agree with Sophia, governance is important, but we have to think maybe on inclusivity. I don't know how to define that. Taking care of small species, you see in the, in the picture. So, I would uh, I would go first with that. That maybe second could be governance. I I totally agree with Sophia. Maybe we can expand this discussion uh, early 
2023. Sophia, if you agree, you got me on your uh, network anytime you want to do it, jump on a call and, and go deeper into this. Feel free to do that. So, and I also agree with Alfonso before he leaves what the marketplace for innovation that could be really uh, a winning move to, to set it up. Okay. So we had, we had, so we got some good thoughts here. I'd like, I guess I'd like to, rather than continue here, we like to get done uh, <laughs> and in it within an hour. I think there's a lot more discussion that's going to uh, go over into January 12th session, as well as hopefully, as you said, Andrea, um, kind of independently here over the next month is I guess where I'd like to suggest we take this next. I mean, rather, rather than, Trying, trying to slam in in the next five minutes <laughs> and make make some ultimate decisions, folks. What do you, what do you guys think? Nobody wants to say. <laughs> okay, so then since nobody's going to say, we'll we'll go, we'll go. They're all afraid, Tom. They're all afraid. What you <laughs> Committing to stuff. No, no, he's afraid. It, it's it, it's. <laughs> No one want you know we we like it all tied together in a nice pretty bow, you know here. Okay, here's the, here's exactly what we're gonna do. We know what we're gonna do, and it feels like there's some more there's some more thinking, some more talking, some more um, ideas that we need we need to percolate a little bit here um, because when we we say we're gonna go in a, a direction, we kind of would like all of us to say yeah that's really gonna be some value there. Um, on it, and I'm not sensing that we're, we're there yet. Um, so that, that so that's why I'm suggesting let's let this percolate. We got some work, and then January 12th, we're, we're we have the opportunity to maybe take some of the ideas that percolate over the next month and, and really start bringing it together very closely. And, may, and maybe we can put some provisional thing out over the next uh, before before the holidays. That then we can yeah. say, yeah, here's here's one of two things we're going to do in first quarter. Maybe that's a way that it, it doesn't turn into, you know, we we do we look at fifty different things and we don't come to conclusion because we do want to come to conclusion here. Okay, that's great. All right, I Good. need to run as well. Thank you. Um, have Thank a, you, a happy holiday for everybody who I don't see in the next few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Cheers. Okay, everybody. Great you, work, you everyone. Thought, look, let's get your ideas out there. And um, yeah. you're welcome to do calls. I mean, if you want to join our call next Tuesday, um, actually, you know what? Maybe I'll put it out there in the wiki, you know, for further conversation. <laughs> We're going to continue this. Absolutely. It would be great to have somebody else we'll talking with us. Okay, I'll do that for next Tuesday. I think it's 1030 Central Central Time that you're welcome to join. Yeah. Okay. So to Tom, I think uh, we, we come in, we, we coming to the end. Uh, we're on top of the hour. We exceeded actually. So I think it's time for, let's say, Christmas greetings. And you say for the new year. And on my side, I mean, uh, we'd love to, to thank, uh, thank you all. Especially you, Tom, Marie, Alicia, for sharing time with me. We do it on on a weekly basis. I would love to thank Ihan, is a good friend of mine. Uh, new, uh, also Juan is a good friend. So the community hopefully will grow as it has grown over the last few years. And seriously, guys, enjoy this uh, this Christmas period with your family. All the love in the world to all you and enjoy. See you in 2023, guys. Beautiful. Have a great rest of the day, everybody. Bye. Uh, Bye. Happy holidays. Bye. We don't see each other. Happy, 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 happy New Year. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Bye. In advance. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye Han. Bye. Bye. Bye, Sophia. Bye. Bye. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to hear you, Ciao. Sophia. Bye. Bye. <laughs>